California is locked in an epic drought, at least the worst in 119 years of records, but possibly based on tree ring data, the worst in 500 years. Our state's lakes and rivers are being systematically drained. Rivers and streams are withering. And anadromous fish swimming home from the ocean may find that home is just a mirage. Two weeks ago, we flew aerial surveys over the lower Eel River and documented its status in video one. Our base was Garberville. Two days ago, we did the same for the upper eel, and our base was Willets. The eel is the state's third largest river and a major producer of salmon and steelhead. Here's our second video survey results for the Eel River for 2014. The plan was for me to fly the airplane into Willets, arriving about 0830. There, I'd meet fellow biologist Pat Higgins we would hook up the GoPro cameras, do some final route planning, and be airborne by 9 a.m. That would give us about one to one and a half hours to fly as much of the upper Eel River drainage as possible before rising thermals and turbulence put an end to our flying day. Well, it turns out the Saturday we picked to do this was also airport day at the airport. So we had a little extra air traffic to deal with and had to follow the parking restrictions. We got our five GoPro cameras on and running and we're soon on our way. First waypoint was Lake Pillsbury, 20 miles due east. But almost immediately out of the box we had camera battery issues. We lost that all-important camera you see there between us that records the cockpit voice. Another camera outside also took a dump. So this resulting video has only voiceovers like this. Yeah, so try to ignore our flapping jaws if you can. After a 10 minute ride to Lake Pillsbury, we dropped down for a low flight over the lake, then passed out over the dam and headed downstream on the main eel for 50 miles to Dos Rios. For the first 20 uh, miles or so, uh, we only have pictures. Uh, while a sample of these pictures are playing, I'll let Patrick describe this reach of the river. That's like Pillsbury down there, Rich. It looks pretty good. Filled up between February and April with the rains in the spring this year. That's enough water so that they can actually be releasing block water now uh, below Van Artsdale. As we fly down the river here between the dams, Rich, uh, a lot of old growth forest is owned by PG&E. And there's a, a settlement that uh, was part of their bankruptcy proceedings, and this area might be able to be uh, transferred from pg e to uh, Mendocino National Forest so we could have a, a, a more functional recreation area in here, which is pretty exciting. Spawning between the dams uh, has been pretty high since about 2010, and there's been two uh, or sometimes even more than 3,000 Chinook salmon jumping over the Van Artsdale fish ladder and through the Van Artsdale fish station and spawning between the dams. Now we're down below Van Artsdale Dam Ridge and uh, you can see that the flow is less, uh, but it's still, uh, it's got some, uh, some juice. They turn the flow up from 10 cubic feet per second on August 16th to about 20 or 25 CFS. And so uh, the river is in better condition than it would be uh, if it weren't for the National Marine Fisheries Service and California Department of Fish and Wildlife uh, requiring that uh, pg e run more flow. And that flow is going to stay uh, elevated, I guess, through October 15th. So that's good. Hey, Rich, at 12 o'clock. About 15 miles up that way is the headwaters of the Black Butte River. Uh, it starts up near Black Butte Peak and it flows down and becomes a tributary of the Middle Fork. Okay, I don't want to be flying up that canyon. Let's go up over this next ridge, descend down to the river, and fly it back downstream. Uh, we can check it out all the way to the confluence with the Middle Fork. That'll give us a good idea of what's going on. Wow, the Black Butte's dried up. It was flowing in 2012 and 2013, but now it's lost its surface flow. Yeah, that's pretty bleak. It's going to take some serious rainfall to turn that into a stream again, much less a river. 
Do salmon get up this far or just the steelhead? Yeah, Rich, you'd be amazed. In some years, thousands of Chinook salmon get up here and spawn in the main stem Black Butte and in the Middle Fork, up Williams Creek and all over in this country. And the steelhead runs in some years are phenomenally abundant too, but it all depends on flow. Okay, I see a bridge coming up. Hey Rich, that's where the Middle Fork's coming down at the Yale River Guard Station on the right. Well, at least the Middle Fork upstream of here appears to have some surface flow. In its headwaters, Rich, there's hundreds of summer steelhead right now, and they're sitting in cold water in stratified pools, because that's the Alabali wilderness. But as it opens up here onto the Round Valley floor, uh, the river's really filled in six, since the 64 flood. It gets really warm in this section, and there's very few places in a flow year like this that we're going to have uh, any juvenile steelhead uh, surviving. That's where Outlet Creek comes in, Rich, and that's Highway 162, and that'll follow the, the main eel here uh, all the way down to Dos Rios. So this is an area that's highly utilized by fall Chinook salmon for spawning, so people can uh, come out here in a car and uh, drive down and take a look at the different places in uh, once the salmon are in here in November and December spawning and it's really magnificent. Uh, you wear some polarized sunglasses and it's really wild America. Coming up on Dos Rios here, Rich, I guess we're going to end the main stem survey here uh, and leave the reach below for another day, go up the middle fork and come back down to here. The middle fork is actually a lot less nutrient rich than the south fork rich. So when we're looking at the river's condition, it has some algae where it swings into the sun. Uh, and of course that's a natural condition, but it doesn't have too much algae uh, because it isn't nutrient enriched uh, like some of the other branches. It's coming off of wild lands. Both the middle fork and the upper black butte are uh, pretty much uh, in federal lands and in wilderness or in uh, very uh, low uh, management regimes with federal agencies. So uh, the Middle Fork is coming back into shape for Chinook salmon spawning. And when uh, the fish can get up into the Middle Fork in appropriate rainfall by Thanksgiving, uh, it is just wall to wall in here. So it's the salmon's world for three or four months a year, Rich, but right now uh, this is warm water fish habitat. It's good for turtles and it's on its way to dry. Well, Pat, those are certainly the operable words. On its way to becoming dry. The only question is, will we start getting some decent rains before this happens? But I have to say though, I've been totally amazed at the resiliency that the river is showing in the face of this drought and the fact that it's not already dry in major reaches. Nevertheless, so we don't lose a whole generation of salmon and steelhead, let's pray that normal rainfall resumes soon and that this drought doesn't stretch into a fourth year. Thanks for watching. Browse my other videos at Sting Flight and subscribe. It's free.